Back in Lesson 4, we work with tracks to create chapter markers that would allow our viewers to jump directly to the content in the video stream that interested them. In this lesson, we'll take chapter markers to the next level and create what DVD Studio Pro calls a story. Fundamentally, stories are nothing more than a collection of chapter markers from a track rearranged so that the track content will play back in a different order. If you're following along, I have opened the L10 project file. In the track editor, bring up the Marine Life track. This is the track that is currently targeted to the Marine Life button on the Scene Select submenu. Currently, there are eight chapter markers assigned to this track. With a story, we can force the DVD player to play back these markers in a totally different order, just like an iTunes playlist. And the best part is, stories take up no additional space on the DVD because they only reference the markers of a pre-existing track. Before we create a story, there are some limitations you should know about. First, stories can contain only chapter markers from the track to which they belong. Second, the maximum number of stories you can have per disc is 99, which seems like a lot until you consider that 99 is the total number, including all tracks and slideshows combined. To create a story, select the track in the Outline tab that contains the markers you want to create a story from. For our DVD, let's create a story from the Marine Life track. To create a story, click the Story icon in the toolbar, or right-click on the track and choose Add Story. A story is added to the track and a teal green tile appears in the graphical view. Click on the story text and rename the story Fish Story. To open the story, double click the icon in the Outline tab or the tile in the graphical view. In Quadrant 4, the story editor appears. The current story appears in the view dropdown and the track from which it was created appears to the right. The area directly below is called the source list, which includes a numbered list of all the track's chapter markers and their durations. Durations are calculated from marker to marker. For example, the rockfish marker has a duration of 6 seconds. This is because the Garibaldi marker directly below it appears 6 seconds later in the track. Track markers are therefore likened in outpoints. The marker is where the segment begins, and the next marker in the list is where the segment ends. To build a story, you simply drag a marker from the source list into the area to the right called the entry list. Drag the Garibaldi marker to the entry list and release your mouse. When you click the play button in the viewer, only five and a half seconds of the track will play, which is a segment of video between the Garibaldi marker and the anchovies marker. Now drag the halibut marker into the entry list, and then the sheep's head marker. Now right click in the gray area of the entry list and choose simulate story. The simulator, like the DVD player, will play the story segments in the order that they are listed in the entry list. One thing you may notice is that some segments may display a slight pause when playing back. This is because the laser must move to a new chapter marker and refocus. Typically, you'll see this on markers that are placed non-sequentially in the entry list. Markers that are placed sequentially will play back seamlessly. To change the order of your story playback, just drag up or down on one of the entries. To delete an entry, select it and press delete. You can also replace a marker in the entry list by right-clicking in the marker and choosing a new marker from the menu that appears. If you think about it, a story is just an alternate presentation of a track's content. There are many ways you might put stories to use. If you're a production house that sends out a lot of demo reels, you could use stories to quickly change the order of your work to suit a particular client. If you're a filmmaker, you might use stories to create alternate endings for your movie, the so-called director's cut. You can also use stories to create track content that is kid-friendly, with the objectionable material literally skipped over. Now that the story is created, it can be treated just like a track which means you can target the item and set its end jump. Double-click the Catalina submenu to load it into the menu editor. Right-click inside the Marine Life button and choose Target, Tracks and Stories, Marine Life, Fish Story, Story. Now click the Fish Story element in the Outline tab and in the Story Inspector, check the end jump. Currently, the end jump is set for Same as Track. So how do we know what track it's set to? Well, if you click on the Marine Life track in the Outline tab, you'll see that the end jump is set for the Catalina submenu, so we don't need to change the end jump. Okay, one last item. Click back on the Fish Store in the Outline tab. In the General tab of the Inspector are a list of stream options. A story has complete access to every audio and subtitle stream on a track. The items with the check mark are streams that are enabled. By unchecking the boxes, you effectively turn off that stream for the story. This would be useful, for example, if your track had two audio streams, one for mature viewers and another for children. You would simply uncheck the stream that contained the objectionable audio 
and the story would only play back the family-friendly version. The same could be said for subtitles. You could create a story that forced the playback of a subtitle stream and create a closed captioned version of your track. In our case, because there's a syncopated music track playing under the video, the cuts to the reordered chapter markers makes the audio sound strange. Uncheck Audio Stream 1, then right-click the story and choose Simulate Story. Now the story plays back without the audio stream. In the next lesson, we'll explore the world of scripting, which will really take your DVDs to the next level.